Hey guys, Kristen here, sports dietitian, certified personal trainer, and owner of Elite Nutrition Performance. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about fat loss for athletes. So it's New Year's resolutions time, and honestly, I am slammed with people that are contacting me that work out a lot, and they want to lose body fat, they want to gain muscle, they want to do all the things, and of course, it's that time of year. So I think it's really important to talk about this topic, especially around now, because people wind up doing um, diets and, and different things that really are not appropriate for what their goals are or also for their level of activity, for them working out, for them you know, being an athlete, that type of thing. So we're gonna kind of clear the air and talk about all these things today. So um, first of all, I want you to make sure that you're having realistic goals. So sometimes I get the occasional client that will say, well, I have a sedentary job, I'm 50 years old, and I want to have 12% body fat, and I wanna look like the um, athlete, the latest athlete that won the CrossFit Games. And that's just not realistic. I hate to say that, but it's not. If you're only working out you know, three days a week and you're sitting for the rest of the day, it's just not you know, realistic. So really think about your goals. Um, is it, you know, not just a, um, I want to look better goal, but also I want to be healthier. I want to perform better in my workouts. Uh, I want to prevent a disease, something along those lines. Those types of goals are actually going to carry a lot more weight and really help you to kind of carry through on, um, making it happen, then I just want to be 12% body fat because I think 12% sounds like a great number to be at. Um, number two is forget about popular diets. So right now we're in this whole low carb, no carb, ketogenic diet, um, paleo, uh, Whole30, um, intermittent fasting, and even combining all of those things into one diet. Um, which is not great because people wind up under eating at that point. Um, and you're really, especially with intermittent fasting, when you're only eating, you know, between, I don't know, 12 and, and four, you're only giving yourself four hours to get in the nutrients that you're, you need and your body, or you're trying to just shove in all these nutrients within four hours, um, your body, you're not really giving it any opportunity to actually burn off any food because you're basically starving it the rest of the 20 hours and then you're just trying to shove in thousands of calories within four hours and your body can't utilize all that food so it winds up actually storing some of that as fat so really i want you to do your research on all these diets and then two find out um from a professional is this actually something that is good for you and especially for you being an athlete or an active individual so don't just go with what you're neighbor or your coworker is telling you to do because they did it and it worked for them and blah, blah, blah. You know, really do your homework and do your research on these things. Um, so really what I want you to focus on, if you are active, you are an athlete, you wanna lose some body fat, there's really three main pieces that I want you to, to focus on. One is balancing your plate. And I talk about this a lot. So balancing your plate to match what your activity level is. So if you are trying to lose some body fat, ideally what you would want to do is eat half of your plate um, fruits and vegetables, a quarter of your plate lean protein, a quarter of your plate a whole grain, and a little bit of added fat. If you are um, you know, exercising a fair bit, high intense uh, workouts, then you would actually increase your carbohydrates to about a third of your plate and still eat a quarter of your plate protein, you know, some vegetables in there and some fruit and a little bit more fat. If you are, you know, doing maybe a, um, I don't know, a full day race like a Ironman triathlon or a marathon that day or something, you know, really intense, then what you want to do is then increase your plate so that it's half of a plate of carbohydrates, still have some vegetables in there, still have a piece of fruit, still a quarter of your plate protein and some a little bit of extra fat. So maybe like a tablespoon instead of a teaspoon. So as your activity level increases, you're eating more carbohydrates. Your protein is still staying the same. This is a, a big problem. A lot of people wind up actually overeating on protein, taking in like 50, 60 grams at a time. Your body will actually store that as body fat, by the way, because it can't use that much at one time. Your protein is going to stay the same no matter how active that you are. It's the carbohydrates and the fats that are going to change. If you're not as active, you decrease those, but you don't cut them out. So number two would be following your hunger and fullness cues. So I tell people about this hunger fullness scale. One would be you are hangry, you're gonna eat your arm off, you're not a 
pleasant person to be around. Three would be you're starting to feel low in energy. You are um, feeling like a rumbling in your stomach. You're ready to eat. Five would be you're, you're just satisfied. You could keep eating just for the taste, but you really don't need to. Seven would be you're comfortably full, like probably where most people finish eating. And then 10, or really above seven, eight, nine, 10, would be you are uncomfortably full. You are you're are stuffed, you over ate. So what I would like you to do is eat when you're at a three, stop when you're at a five, which feels a little weird because there might still be food on your plate and you might feel like, I should finish that. But really you don't have to because you're not going to die for between now and two to three hours later when you could eat that and you start to get hungry again. So you're really just cutting back a little bit on your food, um, eating to the point of just having enough to give your body enough fuel to get by, but not necessarily starving yourself either. The last thing, number three, and this happens a lot, is when I first start working with somebody, I ask them, okay, treat, keep track of what you're eating for a couple days before um, we work together. And then they're going through their what they're eating by writing it down, and they realize, wow, I actually don't really do as good as I thought I did. So write it down. Um, you don't necessarily have to track your food in My Fitness Pal, but if you just write down every little thing that you eat, you might realize, mm, I'm really not eating as well as I would, or thought I would, um, or thought I was, and also sometimes if you have to write it down, you don't want to eat it. So you realize when you get home from work at five o'clock and you're starving, um, you go crazy on, I don't know, the chips or cheese or whatever you have around, you don't want to write that down. So I think that's a really good reinforcement for you. So just to kind of recap here, have realistic goals. Two, don't do what the person next to you is doing in terms of diets and all the other crazy stuff that's going on with diets. Do your research. Three, balance your plate. Four, write it down. And five, listen to your hunger and fullness cues. If you can do all of these things, you will have success. It takes some time. It's not a quick fix, but it absolutely will help you to keep your energy levels up so that you can work out and perform in your sport, but you will lose body fat at the same time. So if you need help with this, I want you to join me in my uh, program that I have, the Sustainable Sports Nutrition Academy. It's all about helping people to gain muscle, lose body fat, get healthier, fuel their bodies properly. Uh, you can find all the information for this on my website at EliteNutritionAndPerformance.com and I will also include the link in this video. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good rest of the day and Happy New Year.